All right, so we've done the diagram based on the event, the condition, the circumstance that we have to deal with. We've done the diagram, we've identified some objects. Objects must consist of two or more data attributes. We've found a couple for each one. We've attributed some data. We're going to talk about data attribution a little bit later on. Um, we've looked at how these data flows work. We've written the narratives based on incoming data flows, outgoing data flows. There has to be a task for each of those. So we have this process which consists of a number of subordinate tasks. The last thing we do after we write the narrative is to give it a name. You know, we give it a good strong name with a verb noun construct. Now it's different because we're dealing with the process, whereas the event never starts with a verb. Okay? So this process then supports the event, the circumstance, or, or the, the situation we have to deal with. Now we're going to work with this business rules table. And this business rules table is a way of finding out what the business rules are that determine the behavior of the system, that specify we have to be able to do this, and the absence of the rule says we can't do it. So I've put in the table here the name of each of the objects in this diagram, customer product payment outlet and salesperson or salt and pepper. But salesperson is what we're going to go with. And I've put them across here as well. We're going to work with each of these empty cells initially. <coughs> Excuse me. And to keep the focus and the questions, I'm going to put a one in front of each of the anchor objects. Now the anchor object is going to become the subject of the question that I ask. And for any empty cell, I'm going to go work across here, when I find an intersecting object, that will become the predicate. So I can ask a question by having subject predicate, but I got to have a verb to join them together. Can't ask a question if there's no verb in there. Well, I guess you can. One, one word question is another question mark, right? But we're going to have to do that. So what's the verb going to be? The verb is the context from here. It's not necessarily the verb to serve, nor is it to sell or to buy. It's whatever fits the question, but has to be the, 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 the context of the question we ask has to be in this context, not in any old context, because this table is for this business process diagram. Let me show you how this works to start with. And we're going to revisit this a little bit later on in the textbook. But the question would start off with a rhetorical question. In other words, it doesn't require an answer, okay? such as for a single specific customer, such as Harry Smith, for a single specific customer, how many products might we sell to that customer? Okay. There's my context. I didn't choose some other verb that was outside their context. So I said, a single specific customer, how many products might we sell to that customer? Rhetorical question. The reason we ask that rhetorical question, or, the, or what I call a placeholder question, is because whoever I'm talking to, my subject matter experts, whether it be one person or 20 people, doesn't much matter, I want everybody, one person or more, to get their heads into that space. What are we actually talking about? Then I'm going to ask three specific questions that require an answer. Such as, to a single specific customer, how many products might we sell to that customer? Could we sell them one product? Is that possible? And the answer is, yeah, clearly we could. So I'm going to put one there. Is it possible that we would could sell them several products? Sure. So I'm going to put an N there, meaning numerous or many. You remember in math classes, the N was the variable number, right? So, in the last question is, is it possible that we never sell a product to a customer? And the answer could be yes, in which case I'll put a zero there, meaning not zero or none, but meaning instead never. Let me put that in different words. In French, jamais. In English, jamais. Okay. 
So, but when I have a zero there, meaning never, I have to follow with a fourth follow-on question. And that question is, under what circumstance would that be true? In other words, under what circumstance would it be true that we never sell a product to a customer? Under what circumstance would that be true? Any guesses? This is a real easy one, right? Just because we don't, right? Or the customer saw the product that they asked for, but they didn't want it after all when they looked at it. They didn't like the price. They didn't, they changed their mind. Any number of different things. So there could be any number of reasons that fall into the just because category. So in this case, Every time we find a zero, meaning never, there's an event. What's the event we've just found? The event we've just found is a customer does not buy a product. Look at this one here. A customer asks for a product, right? And they ask for it, and they either get it or they don't. Covers off both sides, doesn't it? Now, we've said here a customer asks for a product. I could have said a customer wants to buy a product. And then the other event would be a customer does not buy a product. So the event here is a customer does not buy a product, but we've already covered that off in here, so it's done. We don't have to do anything with it because it's stated as a customer asks for a product, covers off both sides. And we see here how we say it's not available, or when they get, it is available, and they get the price and so on, the customer can say, okay, I don't really want that, and they go away. That's the end of that. So, now someone might say, well, but wait a minute, we keep track of customers, right? But customers are only people who buy things. My response would be, does it have to be that way? Would we want to, I would ask the subject matter experts, I would ask the client, I would say, would you like to keep track, if at all possible, of customers who ask for stuff, but they don't buy anything? And I know the marketing people would say, oh, you bet for sure. And somebody would say, well, we can't do that. Well, let's not worry about how we do it, how we keep track of the people who don't buy anything. Let's just say that that's a requirement. So a customer then, in our definition of customer, once we've clarified that with the subject matter experts, would be someone who buys something or someone who'd like to buy something but doesn't necessarily buy anything. So that becomes a requirement of the system. Somewhere along the line, somebody has to figure out how can we keep track of the customers? How can we keep track of the customers who don't buy anything? All right, let's go on to another one here. So here we have three rules. These three rules now get documented or written up under the object customer. So we're going to have some documentation here for customer. We're going to have some data attributes. And then we found three new rules. One of the rules is may buy one product. Another rule is may buy several products. We might combine that and say might buy one or more products right, into one rule. A third rule is might never buy a product. And, and that would be written up on the customer. So that tells us what we're dealing with and what's permitted. They can buy one or more. And we can also keep track of customers who never buy anything. We want to do that. Every time we have a zero, meaning never, we must put an example into whatever we write under customer. And the example would be, because I don't buy anything. Just because we don't buy anything. All right, now somebody has mentioned to me that if somebody returns a product, and they never buy anything else, that means that they haven't bought anything. No, that's not true. They did buy something, and then they returned it. That doesn't mean they never bought anything. They did buy something. Okay. Let's look at this one. For a single specific customer, how many payments might we get from that customer? Could we get one payment from the customer? Sure. Is it possible that we could get several payments from the customer? Sure. Is it possible that we never get a payment from the customer? Is that possible? Sure, just because, remember what we said over here? It was allowable, and we're going to keep track of those customers who never buy anything, if we can. 
And if they never buy anything, then we'll never get a payment from them. So in other words, when, so now we have three more rules that we would add to customer. We started out with three. We might make the first two into one as a compound statement, could buy one or more products. We might never buy any products and you can have, um, might give us or make one or more payments might never make a payment, but there must be an example under what circumstances would they never make a payment to us. And one of the reasons is just because they don't, or because they haven't bought a product. Okay? And there could be a number of other reasons too. So you want to think about your business and about the reasons why or the circumstances under which a customer never makes a payment. But we'd have that as an example when we write up the three new rules. We write it from the customer. Look at what's happening now. In the customer, we've now built up six rules. <coughs> For a single specific customer, how many outlets might they shop in? Notice I've changed not the context, but the word I've changed. Might they shop in one outlet? Yes. Could they shop in several outlets? Is it possible? For a customer, a customer, remember, is somebody who buys stuff or somebody who doesn't buy stuff, but we know who they are, right? Because they try to buy stuff, right? Is it possible for a customer to never shop in, a, in an outlet? Well, we wouldn't know who they are, would we? Because to know who they are, even if they never buy anything, they still have to either come into the store or go online, right? Yes, we know who they are if they go online, right? So a customer then, whether they buy or not, has to be someone who shopped in one or more outlets, but never none. Now we have two more rules that get added to customer. All of a sudden we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rules. And we might compound, shorten the statements and compound them, as long as we don't do too much of that. Right? Partition the effort to minimize complexity. Break it down into small pieces. Small pieces are easy to deal with. For a single specific customer, how many salespersons could serve that customer? Now the interesting thing about this is that we're, this obviously has the same context. They come in and they ask for stuff and they either buy it or they don't buy it, but they're served by a salesperson. But we're not talking about one instance of that or one occurrence of that. We're talking about over the fullness of time. They might come into the store a hundred times or go online a hundred times. For a single specific customer, how many salespeople might serve that customer? Could they be served by one salesperson, a specific salesperson? Yes. Is it possible that they're served by several salespeople? Yes. But to clarify, I would ask at the same time, and my thought is, do we do split commissions and split bonuses and things like that? And let's, for sake of argument, say that the subject matter experts say, no, not at the same time. At one time, one transaction is one salesperson. Okay. For a single specific customer, is it possible that they're never served by a salesperson? Aha, now you see, now we need some business knowledge, don't we? Right? Because it depends, doesn't it? Let's say for a moment that I had a subject matter expert who was in the room and I asked that question and said, is it possible that a customer might never be served by a salesperson. In other words, we know the customer, but they're never served by a salesperson. Never served by a salesperson. And let's assume for a moment that the subject matter expert said, well, it, it depends. Because people do say things like, it depends. Or they say, sometimes. Or they say, oh, it could be, maybe, maybe. Right? Now, that sounds like they're obfuscating. It sounds like they're fuzzifying. It sounds like they're being evasive. They're not really being evasive. What they're really saying without adding words is, well, under one situation, yes, and under another situation, no. So as an analyst, I have to recognize that when they say maybe or sometimes or could be, they're really saying, I have different situations to deal with. So I have to then ask, Tell me a little bit about the different situations. And they might say, oh, well, you know, we could have um, a customer that comes in 
they browse and they never interact with anyone, and then they walk out. And then I say, oh, so we wouldn't even know who they are. Right? Oh, that's right. OK, fine. Okay. The other situation is they talk to a cashier. Well, is a cashier considered to be a salesperson? Well, why are we keeping track of salespeople? If we keep track of salespeople, what does that enable us to do that we couldn't do if we didn't keep track of them? Well, it enables us to pay commissions. All right? So we keep track of customer of salespeople because we want to pay commissions. That's a dialogue I would be having with the subject matter expert. Would that cashier get a commission? No, they would be directed to a salesperson. Okay, so whenever there's an inquiry, there's a salesperson. Otherwise, if they leave the store and so on, even if there's an interaction with the cashier, then there's not. We don't even know who they are. So in other words, there's always one or more salespersons if we know who they are and if they're asking about something. Do I understand that correctly? Okay. All right. So in other words, then, for a single specific customer, there must be one or more salespersons that serve that customer over the fullness of time. So far so good? So we've added two more rules, and we've said there must be one or more that serve the customer over the fullness of time. And that gets documented as a rule under customer. All of these get documented as rule under customer. But I heard something else as we were talking. I heard that we paid commissions which nobody had told me about yet. Is that correct, we pay commissions? All right. Do we want to keep track of that in the system, that we pay commissions to these? The answer is yes? OK. So I'm going to put, it is time to pay commissions to a salesperson. Is that right? OK. All right, so as an analyst, I'm going to record that because I heard it. I'm going to get these different events many different ways. I found one here with zero, which was a customer doesn't buy a product. But that's really part of this, isn't it? So I've already got it, but it was an event. Okay. Here, a customer doesn't make a payment. But I also have that one here, don't I? Customer doesn't make a payment. Now I could write these up for clarity's sake, and I probably should, and you should too. Right? But that's covered here, therefore I don't have to add it to anything. As long as I document that I've got it somewhere. Okay? And I heard that it's time to pay commission to a salesperson. So I've written it down, and I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to go there because I'm going to stay focused on what we're doing now. I'm not going to go wandering all over the place because sometimes when we do that, we're difficult with getting back. Okay. All right, so I'm going to not do the whole table. I'm just going to do a couple more elements because you get the idea. You know how this works. And in your workbook, there's some precise information on how this works. In the textbook, Mastering Business Systems Analysis, there's a wide discussion on this in many different situations. So you want to read that. And if you haven't got a book, you should get one. Right? All right. So for a single specific, I'm going to go to product here. For a single specific product, how many customers, such as Lime Green Loafers, size 13, how many customers might buy or want to buy that product? Notice the context again is this process. But I've changed the verb to make sense of the question. So for a single specific product, such as Lime Green Loafers, how many customers might buy that product? Might one customer buy that product? Sure. Is it possible, I know it's stretching, but is it possible <laughs> that several customers might want to buy that product? Yes. Is it possible that no customer ever buys that product? Let's say yes, it's possible that no one wants to buy that product. So I have to ask the question then, under what circumstance would that be true that no customer would ever want to buy the product? Well, it's like being loafers. <laughs> right? So you know, 
it's just a bad choice of product, isn't it? Maybe it's, it's what we call a dog product. I don't know why we want to malign dogs, you know, but, you know, it's, so, so what, how, it's an event flow, isn't it? Okay. And that is a product doesn't have any demand. I found that through that question and that answer. And I'm going to put it up over here. I'm going to, I'm going to ask if there's a marketing person who's part of the subject matter expert. I'm going to say, do we want to keep track of products that we sell for decisional demand? The answer would be yes. In which case, I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to say, product has no demand. And I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to spend time on it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to go there because I want to stay focused on this and nothing but this. Later on, for what I haven't worked on, I've worked on the first one, right? I'm going to come to another event. I can take it in any sequence I like. I don't have to go to the next one. I can go to the last one or the middle one. I'm going to go to the one that I feel comfortable with. And I'm going to do a process diagram, a business process diagram for that. And I'm going to do the table for that. And I'm going to have different rules, even if some of the objects are the same, I'm going to have different rules. I might have the same one and zero, but there'll be a different verb. And because there's a different verb, there'll be a different context, therefore it'll be a different rule. So I can get a lot of rules that way in terms of what must be permitted in terms of interaction of data here, or what cannot be permitted in terms of interaction of data. So those become business rules. And you'll notice that my list is getting longer. Now, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just add a little. But remember I said if you can find one or two or three events, from that you'll be able to find all the other events. We just started this table and we found a couple more. For a single specific product, how many payments might we receive for that product? Well, we could receive one payment, several payments. We might never get a payment. Under what circumstance might we never get a payment? Well, nobody bought it, right? It goes back to a customer doesn't buy, right? Or a product has no demand, that kind of thing. Right? A product has no demand. All these rules get written up under the anchor object. The questions you'll have noticed are exactly the same in structure and organization. Placeholder question for a single specific salesperson, how many customers might be served? Context, choose the verb, the verb construct, might be served by that salesperson. Rhetorical, right? Placeholder. Go on to, for a single specific salesperson, <coughs> excuse me, might they serve one customer? Yes. Might they serve many or several? Yes. Might they never serve a salesperson, a, a customer? And if the answer is yes, <laughs> right? But notice the answers now. Yeah? If the answer here was like that, and the answer is yes, a single specific salesperson, such as Harry, never serves a customer, I'd be asking then, under what circumstance would that be true? Now notice the use of the word circumstance. Remember earlier I said that an event, here's an event, there's some events, an event is a situation or a circumstance. So I'm really saying, what's the event that applies? But if I say to somebody, so what's the event that applies? They won't understand the question. That muddies the waters. Or some other musician, right? So we have to ask in their language, under what circumstance would that be true? What situation, in what situation would that happen? Which is really saying, tell me about the event. I'm looking for the event. I'm looking for stuff you need. And then once you tell me, I'm going to ask, do we want to keep track of that stuff? And the answer would be yes or no. So watch for the word circumstance all the time. And if we say, under what circumstance would Harry never serve a customer? Well, we had a salesperson once. Started on Monday and died at noon. And he didn't have a customer yet. Okay. Do we want to keep track of employees who cease for whatever reason? 
whether they disappear, they don't show up anymore, whether or not they're terminated for some reason, or whether or not they're deceased. We want to keep track of that. The answer is no, we just move on. It's a good example, but no. But the answer is, yeah, we want to keep track of that. It sounds like HR type stuff or human resources type, type stuff. Then we put it over here. Okay. Employee or salesperson in this case, right? Employee ceases. <laughs> so you see, we have, always have to listen to what do things mean? What are the many meanings? And an, to an analyst, it's very interesting because a good analyst has to be able to deal with abstraction and has to be able to deal with detail. And the language becomes very important, the understanding of language. And the first understanding is that not everybody uses the same word in the same way. I remember once speaking to a government person in Ottawa that we were talking about someone ceasing or an employee ceases and they got very confused because they thought we were talking about ceases which is the Canadian Security Agency <laughs> right? but so when we spelled it out we got that solved all right so you get the idea you know how this works this is all in the textbook this is something you can come back to, and we're going to talk about a little bit more as we go through examples of the project a little bit later on.